Hello everyone, this is Professor Colby at McKendree University. I just wanted to make a quick video to explain to you and maybe help you with understanding how we determine the location of the event like an earthquake. So where did the earthquake actually originate from, the epicenter of the earthquake? So imagine you, know, you feel an earthquake there in Illinois or me here in Japan, but where did the earthquake actually originate from? So there's a method we can use in our textbooks by looking at the arrival times of the S waves and the P waves. Remember those different seismic waves that are produced from the earthquake. And using what's called a time travel graph, we can then determine the epicenter of the earthquake. So this is one of your homework questions. I think it's homework question number two on your module three. So let's take a look at how we do this a little bit more closely. So I'm just using your textbook, okay, the Earth Science textbook. I'm on page 236. So imagine you're in Nangpur, India. You've just felt an earthquake, and you're luckily enough, you have a seismic station there. Okay, so you're able to record the arrival times of the P waves, the P seismic waves, and the S seismic waves. So notice in the plot up here in the upper left-hand corner, you have the arrival time of your P S waves, and then the difference between that time and the arrival of the first S waves. So each red line is one minute. So the P wave arrives on your seismic station, right? You feel that first rumble. And then one minute, two, three, four, five minutes later, you get the arrival of the S seismic wave. Okay, so that's the important first piece of information to get. So at your seismic station in India, the difference between the P wave and the S wave arrival times is five minutes. Then you want to go down to your time travel graph. On your book, that's figure 8.11. So these S wave curves and P wave curves were determined for us, and we can use this time travel graph to determine the distance of the epicenter of the earthquake from your location. Okay, so in India, the interval time between the S wave and the P wave was five minutes. Okay, so looking at the P wave curve and the S wave curve, the difference between the two curves of five minutes. So these blue lines here, again, are each one minute. So five minutes, okay, so one, two, three, that's only about four and a half minute interval there. So the next line over, one, two, three, four, and if you add those little bit of extras, those each half makes a five minute time interval. Okay, so then we want to figure out how far away the epicenter was. So now you need to go down to the bottom here or the top. Okay, on your x-axis will give you the distance from your location in either kilometers or miles. So we'll go ahead down here in kilometers. Okay, so with a five minute interval between S wave and P wave, just draw your line down, and here we see that that intersects the x-axis at about 35, maybe 3,400 kilometers. Okay, so that means that the earthquake occurred 3,400 kilometers away from Nagpur, India. But that's 3,400 kilometers in any direction. Okay, so we don't know exactly what direction it came from. So what you need to do then is you need to call up your friends in a few other locations so they can determine how far away the earthquake was from their location to then pinpoint the exact location of the epicenter. So that's what this earth globe image is showing you up in this upper left or right hand corner of the page. So here we were at Nangpur. We determined that the epicenter of the earthquake occurred at 3400 kilometers. So that's 3400 kilometers in a 360 degree circle around that location in India. So we know it was that far away, but we don't know which direction. So you call up your friends in Paris, and you call up your friends down in Darwin, Australia. And they do the same thing you did, okay? If you look back over at the seismographs for both Australia and then in France, they determined the, the time difference between the arrival of the P waves and S waves. For Australia, that time difference, let's look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven minutes. Okay, a seven minute time interval from Australia. So if we go back down to our time travel graph, seven minute time interval, so here was five, so let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, a little bit higher than that, maybe up here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that looks about right, somewhere in here. So about 5,000 kilometers away from Darwin, Australia. So for the people in Darwin, Australia, they would draw a circle about 5,000 kilometers in radius. So now we're starting to pinpoint, so where the circle around Australia intersects that radial line around India, we have one intersection point. Now if we get the data from Paris as well, okay, how far away the earthquake occurred from Paris, where that radial line intersects all the other lines, 
we find the epicenter of the earthquake. So we've used three different locations to pinpoint the location where the earthquake actually occurred. Okay, so somewhere over here in China. I hope that helped a little bit. I know this is a little confusing to learn on your own in the textbook for this online class, so I'm hoping this tutorial just helps guide you through a little bit more. But remember, if you have any questions at any point, make sure you email me, call me, or Skype me. I'm here to help you guys. All right, good luck on the homework.